Oh yes, it is that time again where they try to shake you out of your coins with the news story. Welcome back. If you guys are new around here, my name is Elliot. Every day, we show you the ins and outs of cryptocurrency and help you get ahead and stay ahead of the market. And today is absolutely no different as we contend with some serious, serious FUD. That's right. We have yet another uh, storm of what I'm considering highly, highly manipulative behavior by the whales, by, of course, the big bag holders that want you to believe that just because there's a change of guard going on, that something is going to change about the Bitcoin narrative. So today we're going to be diving in and fighting the FUD head on. We're going to let a few people hop in here. I'm going to have to turn on. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are doing well. Let this video get out there. Going to enable slow mode so we get some uh, reasonable chats going on here. What's going on? The chat's rolling now. And so uh, it's really important that you guys realize that this is nothing new what we're seeing here, but we're seeing a huge attempt for the whales to play into a news story and manipulate the price of Bitcoin, make it look like things are absolutely crashing. If you guys are excited to hear why I believe that this is yet another episode of the old FUD machine looking to shake you out, then go ahead, destroy that like button. And of course, remember each and every comment on this video is entered to win your very own hardware wallet. We'll be giving it away soon. I hope everyone is absolutely having an amazing, amazing day here. <laughs> Wait, this isn't MM Crypto. <laughs> this isn't MM Crypto. Did someone just click on this thinking it was MM Crypto? Come on, you know he always puts his face in the thumbnail. You know that, guys. Um, but the reality is that we uh, we have an amazing, amazing, I think, uh, situation that just confirms every single prior dump that was triggered by a FUD storm, when in reality, what we see is the, the fundamentals around Bitcoin are strengthening. Even what the person in charge responsible for this FUD storm is doing is going to push forward the fundamentals for Bitcoin to an entirely newer and higher plane. And so to me, seeing the announcement that we got today is yet another uh, kind of poetic, poetic uh, sign that you know, you see the dumps in Bitcoin, which we'll go over, that react to these messages or to react to these announcements. And every single time you see the bounce, but you it's not without that FUD, that fear, uncertainty, and doubt that really seems to sweep throughout the market each and every single time. And so we're going to go through and we're going to show about every single fundamental strength or property of Bitcoin that's growing. We're going to talk about how the shock in inflation that's coming in the real inflation, not you know the subsidized inflation that's measured against goods and services that are subsidized, but the real inflation. And we're also going to be talking about the growing fundamental case for Bitcoin. And of course, the fact that every single time there is an announcement from a major you know, news source that can be interpreted as negative, the whales dump. And that is manipulation of you. You're being manipulated by people who have way more money than you and way bigger uh, stake here at the table because they know that you're going to take the bait and they know that they're going to get cheap coins off of it. Cheap is relative, of course. So what I wanted to talk about today is, of course, the Janet Yellen story, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what's coming through the pipeline for stimulus, what's coming through the pipeline for policy changes, and some really amazing and promising uh, sort of new rhetoric coming out of the Securities Exchange Commission, which I sincerely hope is going to be trying to foster American innovation in the cryptocurrency space. I know some people think that like this is some kind of a, somebody said it was like my, my mindset towards that is like an America first thing. It's like, no, I just want America to be a player here in crypto land because I think that when America, the biggest economy in the world, gets involved, it's good for everybody. It's good for the industry. It's good for Americans too, which I am. But it has nothing to do with excluding anybody, right? This is just about making it so that uh, we can have another wave of innovators have their home base here. Um, so this is really, really exciting. Uh, would I continue to hodl ALBT or injective or sell? I'll get to some alt-specific news at the end. Um, Alliance Block and Injective have both been killing it though, so... Uh, thoughts on SBI? I, I feel like I kind of missed it a little bit. They're, they're interesting. They're interesting. I got shielded it by um, uh, Pepe the Goat, uh, Adam Hoddle, and uh, I, I slept on it, and then it went like 5x, and I tend just to like personally stay away from things that go 5x. Uh, that's just not when I try to get into them. If it stays and gets boring and stabilizes for weeks or maybe a longer time than that, then that might be a better uh, entry for me personally, but you know, there's so many good opportunities right now. I'm not, I don't have any SPI. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll regret it. Maybe I'll regret it. I'm not perfect, right? Um, so let's jump in here. Um, 
get this all set up and dive into the content now. If you guys are excited to hear about this, I think it's gonna be a really nice eye-opener about the way that these news events get taken advantage of uh, by the lamestream media, by the whales, and how they essentially you know, all work to get you shaken out of your positions. If you guys are excited for that, please smash up those like buttons. I see some of you that didn't like. Don't be a lurker, a non-liking lurker. All right, so Janet Yellen uh, made this speech that they want to curtail the use of Bitcoin amongst uh, you know, illicit usage concerns, which is really the, the thing about it is that there is a little bit of history here with Janet Yellen that um, Ivan on Tech talked about when he was, uh, she was making a speech and someone held up like a buy Bitcoin sign behind her. I don't know if that's really like making fun of her. I don't think anybody was making fun of her. I mean, it was just a way to get attention for Bitcoin. That was during the last bull run. So people were like excited about Bitcoin. I don't think it was like meant to be negative about her. So we're sorry about that, Janet. We promise. But the reality is, is that the um, this is a Forbes article where they essentially show that less than 1%, 0.034% or 0.34% of all transactions were even linked to criminal activity. And that is ridiculously low. So to say that they are um, mainly used uh, for illicit purposes, mainly, is pretty is not just an overstatement. I mean, that's that's a pretty significant overstatement. Your your orders of magnitude for for 0.034 percent to become 50 percent or more uh, over 50 percent, you're looking for uh, 150x. That's you have to go parabolic on the actual illegal illegal usage here. Sorry, I have I have this covering. You have to go parabolic here on this percentage for 0.034 to equal 50. Right? What kind of uh, altcoin would have that growth? The point is that this is a very, very big and grave misstatement, and I don't believe that this is going to be the character of the law unless this is just a straight up, just the banks are just stepping in, uh, getting, putting someone that they have paid into, into doing their work for them, which could be the case, right? Was, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything is impossible here, right? Um, so this statement to me, uh, of course, the, uh, the Bitcoiners didn't waste a chance to do a nice little uh, dump here. We saw a nice little dump down here um, to about 34K. Um, and that's to be expected when we get these kinds of news events. But we did see a pretty sharp bounce here off the 33K range. Um, I was looking at some really uh, good TA channels. And essentially, if we hold above the 32, 33K range, um, supposedly we're not really breaking any, any big formations right now. Again, we're here at 35 I don't think that this is a cause for concern considering that $35,000 is an astronomically high price for Bitcoin in any other week, but essentially this week. And so uh, I, I'm not alarmed by this at all. And there's always going to be these FUD moments, these fear, uncertainty, and doubt storms, these FUD storms. And they really work to shake people, uh, their, their emotions, and they make you really question your positions in the market. And when you get to that phase, it's really some time that you need to look in the mirror and say, hey, uh, is this going to end Bitcoin. And let's talk for a second about the fundamentals behind Bitcoin, because what they might be talking about here is peer-to-peer -peer anonymized transactions on Bitcoin, which as many people know, is not how Bitcoin is used. It's not used as a transactional layer, almost pretty much like never, right? I mean, how many people are sending other people Bitcoin even for payments uh, right now? Most people are getting paid over, you know, in stable coins is the way people are doing payments in crypto these days. And so to me, it's like, this is a, a very low usage on Bitcoin. However, if they do want to restrict Bitcoin um, and they do want to restrict peer-to-peer -peer payments on Bitcoin, that's not going to affect the institutional purchasing narrative, right? Uh, meanwhile, we have this speech coming out of Janet Yellen uh, yesterday as well, saying that they need to act big to save the economy and worry about debt later. So they're going to print and print and print and print and print and print. And maybe these two statements were meant to be done in tandem so that the, the effect of this one had less of an effect on Bitcoin because she wanted to kind of make it seem like this wasn't going to drive just endless FOMO for Bitcoin. And that could be one theory here as to why they released these speeches on the same day, uh, kind of making these uh, statements on the same day. Maybe that's a way that they were trying to do the kind of sandwich news so that it didn't become this like spiraling, FUD, uh, spiraling FOMO rather for Bitcoin. Uh, regardless, this is extremely fundamentally strong. We know that we got 22% more USD in circulation in the, in the year 2020 alone. I mean, how does that not devalue the US dollar? I get it maybe against other currencies, but against 
things like housing, things like uh, education, things like medical procedures. I mean, there's still the same quantity of those and just way more USD that can pay for them. So inevitably, when you just have an increase of the supply and the same uh, demand, uh, it just seems to water down the, the, the value. Regardless, uh, this is why I think that I'm not super worried. Again, I don't want to dive into any TA here, but this looks fine to me right now. This 35K range, if we started dipping below like 20, if, like if we got to 20K or below, I'd start to be like, all right, maybe we've started to breach some areas here that might be uh, really a place for caution. Like if we if we do the full 50% retrace. Um, but I think the low 20s is even an area where there might be some huge, huge buying support because that's like a huge area of support. So even the 23, 24K range, I'm probably going to be holding. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. I've just never, reg I've always regretted panic selling every single time in crypto. Um, I've definitely made some good proactive sells before. Uh, like I made some good sells in the summer of 2019 when it felt a bit toppy, but that wasn't um, me panic selling uh, on on the lows, right? It wasn't panic selling a drop. It was like me saying, hey, it looks like there's not a lot of steam here and, and, I, and I made a good sell. However, this is a little different where this would be a panic sell because people are worried about the, the ship going down. And I'm just a little bit on, on the side of th this fundamental strength the institutional inflows, the amount of narrative right now is is so beautiful. So who knows? You know, uh, it's impossible to predict the future, but I think that this might have been a response to the clear and present danger of inflations and the spiraling FOMO around Bitcoin. And I personally hope that uh, that the the crypto community is able to educate and bring some sensible regulation here because I just uh, this comment is just uh, uh, patently and blatantly false. You know. Anyway, we have some very, very bullish news here. Very, very bullish news here. If you guys are excited for some bullish news, smash that like button because we have Crypto Mom coming in. Hester Pierce from the SEC, who has famously been a real friend of innovation and someone who has taken a very, very aggressively innovator-friendly stance in the SEC towards crypto regulation. And so she's saying here that, you know, uh, we've gotten a new change of guard with Gary Gensler's appointment and that... Um, Apparently, she said it wasn't set in stone, but that the appointment of any new chairman brings the opportunity to approach new uh, things with a new set of eyes. And uh, one of the things that she really said is that we really need to embrace innovation and see how they can set up a regulatory environment that's conducive to innovation, which they think means uh, providing clarity. Clarity is big. And more importantly, she also proposed this really amazing safe harbor concept where a coin or a project would have years to essentially prove out their utility and decentralization and reach a place where they would have a safe harbor from being actually essentially, uh, you know, targeted. And so I think that this is a really interesting concept, which truly would allow innovation to flourish and would, in my opinion, make America another hotbed for innovation globally. And of course, let some, you know, a, a ton of crypto businesses stay here. Um, and I think that this is an, a fantastic concept. We also have Gary Gensler, of course, taught uh, at MIT. And he also, um, where is it? He... Yeah, is this it? Yeah, well, she's saying she's going to bring up the, the safe harbor rule with Gary Gensler, but Gary Gensler also talked about essentially making it so that um, he, he's warned several times about rushing too, too fast into regulatory uh, situations that would prohibit innovation. Thanks for your excellent analysis. Insured Finance just launched. Have you looked at their product, at their team, uh, trending on Dex tools? Thanks, Craig Lipton. That's a very, very generous super chat. Um, let me just put it over here. Um, insured Finance. We'll do that at the end. Um, I wanted to first, so so personally, the fundamental strength right now around Bitcoin is growing. The fundamental strength around the SEC and their understanding of crypto is growing. And so saying that you want to curtail it and throwing out fake stats to me is, is it's sad. And it shows um, maybe it's just a generational thing. Maybe there just needs to be more education. Um, but I do believe that it's temporary, right? Because we see here that the, the ecosystem is evolving this technology and its use case is clear and present. So... I also wanted to touch on this, uh, showing that the Rick and Morty uh, creators sold a one-off NFT for $150,000. <laughs> and look at this NFT. <laughs> I don't know if it's a joke or something, but this was their NFT. It's cool, I guess. It's cool. 
Um, but it looks like they spent a lot of time on it. And uh, you can see here that NFTs are, are not a joke. And, you know, these authenticated NFTs that show real digital ownership, people are liking them. I think that if this, I think that if this could be taken further, right? I think that if this could be taken further, then this price tag could not only be justified, but increased a lot. And you see like the top comment is hating on the art being paid for for this much. But I think that what's really interesting here is if maybe if you owned the rights to this image by owning the NFT and then every time it was resold, you would get a piece of the resale. If you owned some kind of uh, digital right, if you had access to maybe some kind of uh, exclusive content from, from Rick and Morty, if there was some kind of extra bonus here to the art, there's nothing wrong with exclusive art. I think it's cool and I think that it's going to continue to fetch really high dollar figures. But I think that NFT can be used to fetch even crazier dollar figures in the millions if this really had some more uh, through line and utility. And that's why I think that there's a, a huge, huge market here that just needs to be tapped into, needs to be tapped. And so I think there's something coming. I think it will happen. Um, I'm also a big Rick and Morty fan, so I love this. Uh, but yeah, a casual 150K on, on a pencil drawing, right? And so this is the kind of money that is being opened up for artists when you actually have digital authentication being completely uh, competitively bidded on in an open market. And so this is two things, open market dynamics, as well as authentication and pride of ownership. Really interesting stuff. And, and if you think that NFTs are just this kind of passing fad, they're about to get really, 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 really big, really big. I believe that. Um, we also have a huge piece of news here about Ren and Rook. And so we have Ren uh, now is going to be using a Google Cloud for confidential computing. Um, and they're using a, a dark node beast mode is what they're calling to, to, by using uh, G GCP Cloud as well as uh, a silo dev. I'm not, I'm not really that familiar with a silo framework. However, uh, RenVM now is going to be using Google Cloud, and this is really, really amazing. But what's even more, and obviously we can see here, Ren has been pumping pretty crazy off of this over the last week. It's up 100%. Um, and by the way, you know, Ren has been on my God tier coins list for a long time. I've been talking about this coin since I think like 13 cents or something like that. Um, this is a phenomenal project, and it's one of the, in my opinion, one of the most important projects in DeFi, wrapping Bitcoin to use in other ecosystems, but it's also a wrapper for other projects, for other coins, not just Bitcoin. It's just the primary use case is Bitcoin. And then one, uh, someone I follow, uh, 0x Infinitum, uh, aka Crypto Messiah, he said, yo, TZ and, and Taeyang Zhang uh, is the CEO of Ren, but also the creator of Rook. Rook obviously being one of my favorite babies here on the channel. We were talking about this at 60 bucks, Rook. And he said, yo, TZ is the hiding game, the hiding game, which is going to be uh, how they hide. Um, if you guys want to see my full breakdown of Rook, there's three different games, uh, game theory mechanisms that work together in Keeper DAO. It's really, really mind-bending cool stuff. It's really brilliant stuff. Um, and the hiding game is a critical part of it. It's the hiding game, the coordination game, uh, and the scheduling game. Uh, I forgot. Well, I forgot what the third one is. But anyway, um, the he said, Yo, TZ is the hiding game, which is part of Rook, going to utilize RenVM. Let the cat out of the bag, boy. And he says, does this cat fit in a bag? And so I think that's way, the way he's sort of essentially admitting here that Ren and Rook are going to be officially collaborating uh, to use RenVM for Rook, which is extremely, extremely good that when you see a founder linking his extremely successful project with his kind of new up and coming hot project. And so that to me is, is super, super solid. And is it any surprise that we get a nice pamp out of Rook? I am not surprised at all. Again, uh, I don't even, th I think it's in the next couple of days that we're going to see the emission period end for Rook. So again, super, super solid fundamental news here. Again, keeping you guys up to date and showing you trends before they become trends. That's the magic of this channel. That's at least what I try to do every day. I work really hard to do it and you're starting to see the fruits of it day after day here. So if that's a value to you guys, give me a thumbs up. I told you guys about Ren and Rook months ago. So I gave you guys plenty of lead time and I'll continue to dig up really interesting projects for you guys before they end up taking the crypto uh, mainstream attention. Speaking of that, we actually had, um, I just tweeted, 
uh, an account I follow pretty closely, Altcoin Psycho, who mainly, fo you know, he does some pretty good calls. He's got a, you know, pretty big account here at 84K. Um, he called some big moves in Sushi and some other coins recently, and he re recently said, I got my new favorite altcoin, AKT Akash Network. Looks familiar. And again, this is great. He became, uh, it's, it's his favorite altcoin now, um, but we told you guys about it back in the 60 cent range. And here it's, where where is uh, AKT right now? 168, right? So not quite a 3x, right? Not quite a 3x. But, you know, we're trying to give you things early. We're trying to give you things so that you can be on the early crowd, be the early gang. And if you're the early crowd to these coins, it comes with many, many privileges and benefits far beyond the clout that everyone will respect you for, for getting there early. Um, I'm going to go through one last thing. Oh, yeah, Alliance Block, yet another monstrous day out of Alliance Block. Pushing up, is it at all-time high? Yeah, just 30 minutes ago, it hit all-time high of 65 cents. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic work out of Alliance Block. Um, again, we found Alliance Block here, I think, at four, a little between four and five cents. So fantastic performance here out of Alliance Block. Um, and again, they have some big, big sort of mainstream financial uh, fundamental news coming, uh, and it's going to be big. And so uh, they have some really, really amazing, uh, what they are is a bridge, like Ren is a bridge between Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're a bridge between DeFi and traditional finance. It's a big project. They very well might not pull it off, but, they're do but the potential to pull that off is in a very big high dollar, high dollar number, right? If you're pulling off connecting many, many trillions of dollars to uh, DeFi, that's a potential really, really big um, uh, undertaking. So cool that they're doing this, and I'm really proud to have found them early, and I, they've been an absolute burner, and I'm hoping for more from them. Hoping for more from them. And then insured.finance, you gave me a crazy super tip, so I have to take a look. Um, it's better be legit. Better be legit. Uh-oh. I'm a human. Getting sketchy vibes, bro, from this site. I don't like this. I don't like this. Insured finance, not on Coin Gecko yet. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't like that website. It's giving me sketchy vibes. Make my face a little lower, guys. All right. Um, I'll take a look at insured.finance another time offline, maybe on a different computer. Um, I don't know what's going on with that website. Sorry, bro. Um, thoughts on Virtue Poker, please. Virtue Poker? Thank you for the super chat, but I don't see it coming up. Don't really want to dig for that. If it's just a gambling thing, it probably doesn't excite me. Can you do an Archer Dow detailed convo, bro? Uh, Archer Dow, uh, yeah, I mean, they're like a new, like the eBay of, of uh, minor extractable value. So they're essentially allowing for miners to extract the most value. There's a new project actually coming um, that I am planning to invest in. I haven't invested yet. Um, but it's really cool, and it has a similar kind of vibe uh, to extracting more minor value, which is going to become a hotter and hotter topic, especially if EIP-1559 is passed, which will reduce minor extractable value. So the miners will really want to start using things to extract maximal value. Uh, Archer Dow, again, we covered this at 40 cents, 40 or 45 cents, I don't know. Um, this thing has been on an absolute tear and it's just a, it's a really solid project in a really hot new niche. And again, understanding narratives and niches, right? Rook being a very strong first mover. Now we have Archer Dow with a slightly different approach. And once you see Rook paving the way with a new kind of project, you can start identifying a niche. And usually when there's a hot standout project, you can see that they're going to create their own niche. Look at what Chainlink did for Oracles, looking what uh, Nexus Mutual did for insurance, looking at what Rook is now doing for ME. EV. And when you hit these narratives early, then when the next projects roll along, you can ride them up for tremendous gain. And I use the Pepsi and Coca-Cola, like to every Pepsi, there's a Coca-Cola, right? And, and they have market share. So Archer Dow is very solid. I need to do a deeper dive to give you anything more than that. Um, I, I definitely uh, have some more fundamental stuff, but I don't want to go dig up my docs right now on live. Um, Hey, Elio, thoughts on Unistake? Unistake's cool. It's definitely cool. Um, they have uh, they were waiting to come out with their project for a while now. Um, I need to check back in and see what their status is. I did a sponsored video for them uh, a couple of months ago, 
And so I need to check in on exactly when they're launching. Um, but it's an interesting idea to bring more liquidity. Um, I didn't cover it here on the channel because we have a lot of newbies and, and it's kind of in that kind of micro category. So because I got a flood of like 80,000 new subscribers, I was trying to focus on things that were a little bit less, um, you know, like it takes a while before you're going into Uniswap and finding things under 1 million market cap. You gotta, you gotta work up there. So I'm trying to work the audience up with fundamentals, give them some wins, hopefully help them start to understand the different flavors of the market, understand the fundamentals, and then we'll start maybe going into more micros uh, in, in the future. Can you please do a quick check on DF Social Gaming? Um, thank you for the super chat. That was very generous. You guys are super chatting maybe a little, maybe a little too much on the super chats, guys. You don't have to give me all that. DF social. DeFi gaming project. Okay, staking, farming, gaming, light paper. Do they have any games though? Everybody wants to play. How many getting money? So they have DFS Legends. Oh, is this part of DM script? Okay, so I don't see a game yet. I don't see a game yet. Um, yeah, it's it's interest. I like, okay, here's the deal. I like gaming and I think it's huge for crypto. But one of the things that kind of like rubs me wrong is just seeing like very low quality games because it's either like you, you could get lucky with a low quality game, like a tap tap game getting popular for a short amount of time. But if you really want people to become immersed, like you need to you need to make a good game. And if you make a good game, then they'll do whatever. They'll learn they'll learn about the crypto side. They'll learn about the Ethereum side. They'll manage their NFTs. Um, but so far, the the game sides have been really really underwhelming. Um, I haven't seen. I, I I'm kind of digging here. I, I don't. I'm, it's hard for me to find the game. Where's the game? Where's the game? You know. I'll do more digging into this. Thanks for the super chat. Um, maybe it's good, but I just don't see the the game side of it. And I think that's the big missing piece because if you just have like NFTs and mining without a through line uh, to utility, sometimes that works, like sometimes, but I find that it's way more powerful or I just believe that the real disruptive area is with uh, more fluid gaming. I don't want to hate on them. I hope they're successful and I hope all crypto gaming is successful. I just think the reason why we haven't seen much crossover is because we haven't had many high quality games yet. So that's just sort of my own personal own personal thing. Obviously, I've been building games for three years, so I have a little bit, maybe I'm a little snobby. I've been putting so many of my life hours into the video game side and worked with, you know, sacrificed a lot of my life to try to get our games to be super high quality. And so, you know, the fact that we've been building, sourcing the best devs, the best art, uh, really focused on hardcore uh, attention to gameplay, and we're not happy until the game alone is holding people and people are coming back from the game. That's our philosophy. And so maybe my philosophy is a little bit uh, exclusive. Maybe my philosophy is too hard. Uh, but that's what I've, that's how I've set my mindset up, is I want the best games. I want a game that brings people back because they had, they had a smile on their face. They had the dopamine rush. They felt something. That's what I think makes a good game. And, uh, and if we can achieve that, then I think we'll have a, a lot of crossover. When do I get more information and timeline? When we can invest in Project Super Farm? So anything that's telling you you can invest in Super Farm right now is a scam. Uh, I wanted to uh, put this up here. Um, uh, so I, I just tweeted this from the official Super Farm account, which is that there's only two official Super Farm telegrams, but there is a fake, fraudulent, scam Super Farm. There's actually several of them, uh, telegram groups, that are putting up links for you to send money to. Do not send funds there. It is a scam. I told you guys at the beginning of the video that anything except the official materials 
um, is a scam. And so I, I, I sadly believe that I can't, I can't prevent everyone from getting fooled by that because there's already like 3,000 people that joined the fake Telegram. Um, and I assume that there, there's probably a few at least real people in there getting fooled. And so it sucks. I wish I could stop it from happening. There's nothing I can do to shut down those Telegram groups. Just know there's nothing out there right now. There's nothing out there for Super Farm. If you want to be involved with Super Farm, you have to be in the official uh, t.me slash Super Farm DAO uh, Telegram group. And any announcements of anything to do with the community rounds or anything will be there. There will be absolutely nothing else. Anything on the market right now is a scam. And there are going to be many. There's already many. <laughs> Did you read anything about RBC cross-chain tests? Is that Rubik? Is this Rubik, RBC? Um, yeah, Rubik. Uh, they just exploded. <laughs> they just exploded. Uh, they went up to like, what, 19 cents? Uh, what are they up from the last seven days? Like, yeah, what are they up? 18x in the last seven days? What is that? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, so I, I knew about Rubik back in October down here, and I was actually talking with them about cross-chain stuff. Um, the person that built Rubik is this outsourced developer uh, in Russia. Um, they're a smart development team, but it's the Rubik team just used an outsourcer, I think. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's good quality tech. It's good quality tech. They're building a few other things. They built like Axion and some other stuff, that outsourcer. We looked into potentially using some dev support from them, but we ended up not using them. But uh, I'm not sure what they released, but whatever they released certainly had an impact. I mean, they went from, what was this? Half a mil market cap to 20 mil market cap? Come on. Wow. <laughs> hey, and this is the magic of micros, right? This is the magic of micros. It, it can be a little bit like uh, the lottery ticket, but if you're going to potentially make a... 40x or something like that i mean that it's worth it's worth it sometimes to have a little exposure to these if you're if you're tracking the fundamentals and you believe it's there um i personally don't hold any rubik and i wouldn't advise getting in it at this kind of uh, inflated price i'd let it cool off for a bit um but i'll check in on it i'll check in on the fundamentals sup elliot any thoughts on dia lately i remember you made a video last year when they launched yes yeah, so dia i know the team nice guys uh interesting tech I think the oracles will kind of pump in unison. Um, I personally like the tech on API 3 a little more, um, but I think that um, Dia will probably get the oracle pump when the whole uh, when the whole market moves. Um, I did call it when they launched at one dollar. They ended up pumping to like five dollars or something. Um, but I did, you know. So so this is a topic I'm going to start bringing up more because there's so many new people. There's been so many gains, I know, because people have been talking about it in my chat rooms. Uh, on these videos, the calls have been making people so many gains. When you do experience big pops, it's important to take some profits um, along the way, even if you think things are going to keep going up. Because if you just have a strategy and you stick to it, you have a strategy and you stick to it, then the market never gets the best of you. And that's the absolute best way to do it. When you're up, you stay up by taking some profits. Uh, when you're down, you're not as far down because you took profits when you were up. And so this is the kind of strategy I'll make another video. I have a video called Million Dollar Cash Out Plan where I explain my profit-taking strategy. But something like a Rubik, if you were in this and you're not taking some profits here, I, I apologize, but you're absolutely insane. You're absolutely insane if you're not taking profits on a 20 or, or 40X, right? Um, and that's because you just don't know. Nothing stays parabolic forever. But if I zoom out here to a 30-day chart or a 90-day chart, I mean, look at this. Look at this. It's pretty much straight up. It's, it's straight up. So, you know, a 90-day chart, it's literally a straight line. And so um, nothing stays like this forever. You definitely want to take profits and be smart. And that way, you know, if you made some, some money here, you, you, it stays with you. And you definitely want to take some into you know, you take some into Bitcoin, you take some into Ethereum, and then you take some into stable coins. And then you leave some in, in the coin. You have a sort of a four-tier uh, strategy where you, you distribute into long-term holds and you can replace Bitcoin and Ethereum. Say you'd rather distribute into Chainlink or some other really big market cap coins. Say you'd rather uh, accumulate more Cardano or Polkadot or whatever you think are these long-term uh, holds that are going to do amazing growth. That's where you can really start uh, distributing your profits into those, um, not financial advice, just my strategies. And this is the way when you get pops, it ends up continually feeding your portfolio and growing. Because a lot of people will get these huge gains and then they're sitting there going, 
what do I do now? And it's, you know, there's, it's kind of a meme. And I like to think I kind of started a trend because after I made videos about this, um, I made a video, maybe it was too harsh, maybe it was too, too intense, the clickbait, but I wanted people to click on it, right? And it was, it was warning you're gonna lose all your money or something crazy like that. And, and I wanted people to get the message because I knew people would click on that. And you wanted people to get the message that if you don't take profits, you will risk losing a majority of your money. And all those paper gains, all those gains you had on paper are potentially going to be uh, going to be lost. And so if you get in the habit of profit taking, if you have a simple strategy you execute where when you get a Rubik under your belt, you distribute profits into Bitcoin and Ethereum and take a big chunk into stables and then you leave a bunch in Rubik too, right? You still have a, a big position in Rubik if you love Rubik. I personally don't have any Rubik. I don't actually plan to get any until I learn a little bit more after this. But to be honest, if you really love the coin, you keep a chunk, you put a bunch in stables, you put a bunch in long-term holds, and now you've diversified. And now you've taken advantage of that moment and you've made it work for you long-term. And you've it's called de-risking. It's called managing risk. You're in the most risky investment ecosystem of all time, which is cryptocurrency. You do not need to increase your risk anymore. And so that's where I think um, the, the biggest message for the newbies is. And if you guys enjoyed that, if you learned something from that, if this is your first time hearing about risk management, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. And of course, remember, um, I guess if you're watching this on replay, that your comments are entered to win the Ledger Nano giveaway. What are your thoughts on network and compound? DOS network. DOS will pump like as a micro in the Oracle category, but I'm not, I mean, I'm just personally a little bit more bullish on other things. Uh, it's a bit risky. Um, it's going to pump hard and dump hard. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about uh, DOS. Um, thanks for the uh, super chats, everybody. Uh, check out Safe Haven Shaw, $5 million uh, backed by VeChain. Okay, I'll check it out. Thank you for that. Um, DFS platform, play your favorite games with the tokens as the buy-in and compete against others. The first tournament will be League of Legends. Got it. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of esports stuff that people are trying to do with crypto. I personally think esports is really hard to compete in. Um, it's a multi, multi, multi billion dollar industry that's really cutthroat. And you'll be able to get these esports people to play one tournament, two tournaments, three tournaments. But to become the platform for this stuff is going to take a big, big Herculean effort. And so could it happen? Sure. Is it worthwhile to potentially get some coins in a project that might go the distance? They might go 10, 100,000 million X. Sure, if you want to. But I also know the industry is just really, really hard. And so, um, you know, based on what I know about esports, I think it's going to be pretty hard to compete for a lot of these small crypto. There was another one, Chain Game. Uh, and and a few other ones. It's it's hard business to compete in esports, um, but cool that they're doing it. I hope they succeed. And if you want to take a little bag and hope for the best, then that's great. But it is it they it is a, a very very steep hill to climb to compete as a small cryptocurrency in esports. Even with the crypto stuff, coffee money for your favorite co uh, YouTuber. Oh, thank you for that. That's very kind of you. Uh, Pink Summer, thank you for the uh, the super chat. Um, Elio, thanks for all you're doing. Have you looked into Luxo? Yep, I know Luxo. Um, so the thing about it is there's a there's going to be a transition period before these NFTs in high fashion can really meet. There's a lot of infrastructure missing, in my opinion. And so while it's cool, I think it's pretty nascent. NFTs for real world assets, NFTs uh, for a variety of, of crossovers into the physical world, in my opinion, are going to take quite a bit of time, which is why I'm so bullish on video game NFTs, because there's no infrastructure needed to be built there. You can simply deploy them in a game that is good quality. The only thing missing there is the game, and we have the infrastructure there. And so that's why I'm bullish on NFTs in games as the first mainstream use case. Now down the line, if there was some kind of way that if I bought an NFT, I could take control of an asset like a house or, a, or a, some kind of car or maybe a high fashion item. I get it. There's also like the tracking and verification. I know that if I scan the uh, NFT in the Nikes that I know that I can track the Nikes back to the factory. And that's like what VeChain's doing. Um, interesting stuff there. Don't get me wrong. Um, but there's a lot of interesting plays in supply chain management for blockchain already. Um, that are pretty far along. And so, um, you know, VeChain has, uh, has big connections to high fashion as well. And I don't think that that really did, I don't think that that's been a very uh, significant use case uh, yet, yet. I think Luxo is interesting. Again, they have a strong team, but the product itself, I'm not in love with. Um, I don't love the product. 
Thoughts on linear finance. I actually have some people on my team that have been pushing me to check out linear. Um, I haven't done the deepest dive into it, but I, I've heard some really positive. Any other chats here? Okay, lots of influencers and VCs, um, some really good ones too, some, yeah. It looks good, again, looks like to get, again, this is kind of like bringing synthetic assets on. I think it's good, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of people chasing this. If they do it well, it could go, could go huge, could go huge. Um, the team was reaching out to me, maybe I'll take a call with them and see if they, uh, see how far along they are. That's definitely interesting to me to see what they've built, how far along they are. Um, the product and the mission is is good. It's a good mission, but seeing how far along they were, they are and how they're going to do it, uh, the details matter there a lot, a lot. Um, but but fundamentals kind of stack up. All right. Thank you for the uh, the super chat of PHP Gamer King. Jonathan Watson, have you ever taken a look at Tixel? I did. It was okay. It was okay. Thank you for the great calls. Here's your cut. <laughs> 20 bucks. <laughs> it's not necessary, uh, Yoshua. I appreciate it, though. Thank you. Um, Elliot, our crypto bull run group 2021. I watch your channel every day. Keep up the great work. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. All right. Um, I'm going to get back into the normal chats because I've been just trying to get through the super chats. Um, Compound is great. It's a base layer DeFi product. It's uh, probably going to grow with uh, DeFi a lot. Thoughts on band pumping like Link? Yeah, I think band's going to pump hard. I think API 3 is going to pump hard. I think all the oracles are going to pump hard. I personally am also just a sucker for good tech. And API 3's tech is just like really, really cool. They're doing insurance. They're doing APIs. They're doing uh, oracles. A lot of interesting approaches and, and a very unique project. Whereas band is kind of like the Pepsi version of Chainlink. It's, to me, is, is just, there's, it just doesn't excite me as much. And, you know, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm not here. Uh, I'm, I don't always max gains because I tend to go with the fundamental kind of like, here's what I like from a product side, from an, as an entrepreneur, if I'd wanna go work or be a part of a team or create this product, I sometimes think of things like that. Like, what would I wish I was building? And is this a contribution to the space that I see makes things better? You, you need more than one Oracle. So Chainlink and Band and everyone's gonna be a, a good utility, but I think a, a, it's Chainlink and then API 3 for me. And then you have like Band and DOS and DIA and all those other ones are solid too. They're probably gonna do well. But I personally, my two big Oracle bags are, uh, and then the low cap one is actually become pretty much Ori, though I do have some Octo as well. That's on combo. Looks cool. Looks cool combo. I don't have any. Oh gosh, you guys are you guys are spending big on these super chats today. Yo dog, I heard you like super chats. Here's a super chat to bring your attention to super chats via super chat. <laughs> Learn, earn, don't get burned. Thank you for that. That was really sweet of you. I appreciate that. That made my day better. Um, thoughts on RSR? I love RSR. Uh, it's on my god tier coins list. Honestly, uh, one of probably one of the better projects. Like one of the better projects in the space. It's just a fantastic project. Fantastic project. Well, that can't be right. It says I've been live for three minutes and 45 seconds. That can't be right. If you guys are enjoying this feed, if you guys learned something from this today, 4,800 of you guys in the building, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. Free and easy way to support the channel. I know we've been focused a lot on altcoin content. We're gonna be focused a lot on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum actually um, is doing some interesting stuff, looking like it wants to try uh, to really break out here. It's just, it's being, it's painting some fake outs here. Um, but I do believe that the market structure here is, it looks pretty constructive. It looks pretty constructive, the market structure here. It looks pretty, pretty strong, right? And if we do get over this, uh, this hump, if we do get over this hump, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful breakout, I think. So it'll be 2K at some point soon. I think Ethereum's just a, just a ticking time bomb here until it explodes. And that's really going to reverse the Bitcoin dominance. That's really going to reverse Bitcoin dominance. If Bitcoin's pretty stagnant and Ethereum pops, then, then it's going to bring altcoin season to fruition even more so because Bitcoin dominance does and total, art, total altcoin market cap and Bitcoin dominance are both two charts that are, they matter.
Let people know about pros, Elio. Yeah, I told people about Prosper. Um, they're actually doing really well. And then um, there's another project that actually uh, Chico Crypto talked about yesterday um, that I, is actually really cool called Hopper, uh, which is coming soon. And, uh, and I'm an investor in Hopper as well. Um, and I was excited to hear someone else talking about some cool early stage tech. Chico does good research like that. Um, Honestly, I'm loving Rook Keeper Dow. I'm not selling. I believe it can 10x uh, from here. I'm holding on. I think that after the uh, emission period ends is when you're going to start seeing a little more authentic price act action, even though it's been pretty, pretty amazing so far. What are your thoughts on Ocean's potential? Had a major pump yet, but, uh, but hasn't uh, broken an all-time high. Yeah, Ocean is just another fundamentally strong project, super fundamentally strong. Uh, just gotta With those, sometimes you just got to wait it out wait for the uh, either sometimes there's manipulation, sometimes the whales want to keep it low, sometimes it just doesn't perform. But usually, and not all the time, not all the time, but usually when you see something that's truly fundamentally strong, you get you get good action, especially in a bull run. Check fat swap, fast swap decks launching soon. So yeah, there's also a, a bunch of layer two or, or like uh, sort of roll up dexes. There's... Uh, ZK Swap, which is one that I know Box Mining invested into um, and has been covering a lot. And this one, I think, has been doing pretty well. Um, yeah, this one has been pumping pretty hard. Um, but this shows to me the need for uh, swaps to be done on Layer 2 and batched back. Th these types of, uh, of exchanges are going to become really popular. I mean, these are some really weird price actions, to be honest, though. What kind of price action looks like this? Um, it's almost a little too flat, like, like there's no coin supply to be sold. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little curious now because this price action does not look authentic. Um, only 40 million. No, that's 40%. Okay. Anyway, I'm a little sussed out by the price action. Maybe it's just, I, I don't know, some interesting price action. Um, but at the same time, this is one, uh, a second layer swap project that people have been talking about. Then there's also Falcon Swap. Falcon Swap is still pre-launch. I've been talking with them for a while, um, but they have an opportunity here with Falcon Swap to deliver something that's also high quality. It's been a bit of a, a, a rocket ride back and forth for Falcon Swap. Um, you can see going from, you know, in December, you know, f uh, of just a few cents. Here it was, it was like five cents, six cents. Um, and then it went all the way up to, what was this, like almost 40 cents? And then, or 35, then down to 17, then back up. Big rocket ride, lots of FUD and different stuff. But again, if they're able to deliver, people need a better trading experience. They just do. They need that trading experience. Um, and then there's another one, uh, Quick Swap. And Quick Swap is uh, a Matic project, and it's on Matic. And they're they're essentially doing gasless uh, swaps on Matic. Only difference is you need to essentially get your uh, MetaMask set up, set, set up a custom RPC, which is like a, a second network within your MetaMask. It's not that hard. It takes about five minutes, but it is for some people uh, a bit of a step. And then you need to send funds to your Matic wallet, and then you're on Matic. Um, so there's a little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump for this one, um, but this is like fully gasless. Only problem is that it doesn't have the liquidity of the of the layer ones. And so Falcon Swap's doing like order aggregation. It's built on top of Uniswap, which is why I really liked it. Um, but again, there are some, you know, they're still not quite ready to ship. And so I'm not really pr pushing it until I see them actually fully working, fully out, and fully ready. And so I'm still, I've been kind of like withholding my coverage of Falcon Swap because I wanted to see them get a little further. Um, ZK swap again, also similar, but I see them all as part of the same narrative, which is that swaps on layer one, swaps on Uniswap are, are very expensive. The fees, pretty much pricing out too many people, and as Ethereum continues to get more and more congested and more and more expensive, you get more and uh, it becomes less and less usable. A DeFi becomes less and less usable. So these types of things will become more popular. This is a narrative, right? This this sort of uh, this is the narrative that I see getting popular, as well as you have uh, Uniswap V3 might have some relayer or second layer stuff built in that would truly help batch transactions and significantly reduce gas costs. So I'm hoping that they are going to move that forward soon.
Bao token is amazing. Yeah, you know the thing about Bao is uh, somebody pitched me on Bao not too long ago, and uh, it definitely sounded interesting. It was just a bit. Um, let me see what the price history here was. Yeah, it did one of these, and I just don't touch anything that does that. But now look at it again. So that's what happens. Sometimes you just have to be tracking it for that. Again, remember I've told you guys. Sometimes when things launch, they go completely overcooked, and then they'll cool off. And you get another good entry point in, and you could have gotten down here after the after the explosion at like, God, I hate when there's so many decimals. They should they should reduce their supply. Um, stake Uniswap LP tokens and earn bow. Sure, I forgot what the what the full uh, I forgot what the full deal was here, but there's um. Synthetics plus Ave for Uniswap. Sushi swap and balancer. Uh, and trying to treat those tokens and do like a synthetics and Ave with those tokens. Interesting. I like it. Um, I'm not sure how unique it is, to be honest. I need to do a little more research, but I had one of my researchers uh, push this to me, as well as Rubik. It's funny. They pushed Rubik and Bao to me. Now look, they're both performing. See, guys, I don't get all the trains. I don't get all the trains. Love from the UK. Thoughts on S key and glitch. S key, I don't know too much about. Glitch, I actually was offered the private sale and I passed on it. Evolve Finance, created by Ferrum team, not yet released. TGE will be fully dilated market cap under 1 million market cap at launch. Uh, I need to know what they're doing. Uh, the Ferrum team now has a bunch of tokens that they're putting out, uh, which is okay when it's okay, but I've, I've typically seen those models get a, a little unstable, a little unsustainable. Gulping like a fool. What do you think about Un Uniris, UCO? I don't know. Sometimes you just see a token and, and it doesn't, doesn't even make you want to research it. What are your thoughts about Unistake? You mentioned it back. I actually talked about Unistake a couple minutes ago. Thoughts about Roya? Roya? Is it Royal? Yeah, this one, Roya. Okay. Industry focused DeFi for the iGaming industry. What's iGaming? Is this oh. so what have they built? Is it just a big pitch deck? So they're in research mode. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, okay, okay, here we go. What are they defining as? What are they defining as iGaming here? Oh, is this it? iGaming is a business. Wait, iGaming is having a bet on the outcome of an event or game online. I guess that's what iGaming is. Uh, yeah, I think similar to what I said before about the other predictive uh, sports betting stuff or esports e betting, if that's what it is. Have you seen Kex? Someone in your channel mentioned it low cap. Uh, no, I haven't. Sorry. Love from UK. Thoughts on. Oh, no, read that one. Thanks for the great uh, information. Do you have any thoughts on Zora? Yeah, I. Uh, it's been hanging around. It's been a low or low cap oracle hanging around for a while, and I've just never never gotten a bag. It seemed a little. There's just other opportunities I was more excited for. You looked into Bird. Seems like uh, it has wins and could fly. Yeah, uh, Bird's interesting. I talked about it pretty early on at about one million market cap. 
Um, it has an interesting credit system they're trying to develop. I don't know how successful it'll be, but I like their ideas. I like their ideas. We'll see how well it works. I still don't think it solves really the problem that they're trying to solve yet. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's my, okay, cool. It's got frozen. Please do a little research about Ergo, most undervalued coin now. Most undervalued, apparently. Um, I'll check it out. I, uh, I haven't looked at Ergo in years. Could you look at Datamine? Very interesting DeFi project and low cap. No one else is doing what they do. Crazy under the radar. Datamine. Super low cap. Yeah, no, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, updates on Phallus seems most promising dot token. It's super promising. Um, I actually take a little bit of pride in finding Phala back in the day before it became a cool, before Phala was cool, we were friends. I was Phala's first cool friend. Um, yeah, we talked about Phala right here, right here. Um, but yeah, look at it now. Flying. Absolutely flying. Congrats to Fala. I think they're going to get a parachain. The thing about it is if you guys understand the way Polkadot works, there's all these parachains, but it's not like unlimited parachains. So it's going to be limited. It's going to be really hard to get a, bar a parachain. But Fala, Akala, Moonbeam, um, uh, uh, Kusama, obviously, PCX, Chainx, there's going to be several projects that get parachains. And based on that alone, there's like a scarcity and what I call a protective moat there. So you're going to be able to have some, I, I believe you can pretty well be assured that those projects are going to, um, they're going to do well. That's why I like Fala a lot. It's like the, the most, uh, it's the first mover privacy coin on uh, Polka. That's an open governance token. They want to stake real world assets like real estate. Yeah, it hasn't worked yet. Thoughts on Phantom, they're working with Andre Cronier. Yeah, I like Phantom. I actually know the team. I actually know the Phantom team really well. They're cool. Uh, they're working on some stuff long term. Long term, they're working on some stuff. They're not very into marketing right now, but you know, I, I, I like them a lot and I want them to succeed at what they're doing. I just think it's a while away before Phantom will really um, start to perform and do its thing. But there is a future for Phantom, I believe, and there's a potential for them to do some really interesting stuff. Super interesting, I think. Um, but you know, am, am I buying Phantom right now? No, there's other opportunities I'm buying right now. Um, but, but huge respect for the Phantom team, hundred percent. Uh, peace, respect, and love from the UK. Your thoughts on pools, which one's pools? Is this one of those pre-sale ones? Is this like the poker starter thing? Yeah. Yeah, here's the thing. Like Pokestarter is doing it, but even the the quality of projects on Pokestarter is very is very all over the place. And so for me, these are only valuable if the projects launching on them are valuable. And, you know, as soon as we get any kind of bearish condition, they're going to they're, they're not going to do so well. However, the launch pad there is, I mean, look at look at Pokestarter. Look how crazy this this is. 146 146, I mean, craziness, absolutely crazy. Um, so yeah, Pokestarter's done fantastically, fantastically. Um, and so I think a lot of people are going to be looking to copy them. However, it all comes down to having a big community and having the best projects. And if you can get great projects, then you can get uh, really good gains out of these uh, pre-sale tokens, these early sale tokens. But if you don't get good projects, then it does not matter. It just doesn't matter. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, and and something like pools, like who are these guys? I don't think they're going to get any good. I mean, they might they might get a couple of projects, but I, I doubt they're going to get anything good. Uh, can you take a take a look at Ferris Strategies, non anon team? All right. Pay us, give us a token, pay us, and we, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. No. I mean, also, you guys have to understand, I'm also the kind of person where I've been giving out free advice, not advice, not fin financial advice. I'm not supposed to say financial advice, right? Uh, but I've been giving away my strategies and giving you essentially all my knowledge and how I approach the market for free for years. Uh, and I just, when I see people paying, trying to turn uh, advice into a service, trying to turn their knowledge into a service, um, I get it. Everyone needs to make a buck, right? But at the same time, I don't like that. I don't like that because in crypto, it's very scammy when people sell knowledge. It just always has been because then you get these sort of like pump effects that end up dumping on people, right? Where you, where you get these early people and they get the knowledge and everyone's there and they pump the prices up and then the later people come in and then the knowledge gets passed around. Um, and then oftentimes uh, the people who are supplying the knowledge are front running. I don't like that stuff. Um, for me, I'd much rather just put it out there for the world, let everybody have access to the information at the same time. And hopefully that makes everybody, that puts everyone at an equal playing field too, right? Where someone who's putting five bucks in is in the same position as someone who's putting 5,000, you know, 50,000, right? And, and that puts a really nice um, leveler on, on, the, on the market. And so I believe that this market, if anything, has the potential to help the little guys most of all. And that's why I'm so passionate about what I do here. However, I also see uh, the ways that the ways that the market can have some dark edges. And so I'm just not about the paid uh, group stuff. I never will be. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's something I feel strongly about. And so when I see like a coin dedicated to being like paid advice, it, it honestly, it rubs me wrong. Ethereum Classic since ETH popped. Never Ethereum Classic, no. Even if things like that pump, it doesn't make them good. Right, just because it pumps doesn't make it good, and just because something might pump to me, I don't play that game. I like to find things that are good and get in early. That's my strategy. Find something that is really good, and just people don't know that it's good yet. And occasionally, I've done some some like, oh, this is an SHIT coin. It's obviously a meme, but who knows? It's it's gonna pump probably. I've done that. Like I bought some yams back in August. I bought some uh some what was it based or whatever. Um, but it's not how I like to throw my stacks around. It's not how I like to do it. Uh, I still hold a lot of FY FWT, uh, waiting for the product release, hopefully soon. Can you look at shard coin? Um, I think I've seen shard. It's okay. Thoughts on meta. I actually really like meta MTA, MTA meta or M E T A. Yeah, I like meta, but MTA meta, this one, this one. This one's solid. This one's super solid. And it's been in like the longest downtrend. Yeah. I think it's gonna, I think there's, you know, how much, it's got like a 5X back to its prior high. I think it could get there in DeFi mania. In DeFi mania. Am I in Hathor? Um, look, the thing about Hathor that I don't like that's kept me out of it and I apologize, I've been running on like pretty low sleep, guys. I don't know if you can tell. Um, but I've been running on really slow, low sleep, getting ready for my announcement, getting my project ready, getting all, all of the different things in place. Um, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the thing about Hathor is that they are really cool tech. The tech is cool. Um, but the problem to me was that they weren't as focused on interoperability and they weren't as focused on tapping into the Ethereum network and the Ethereum user base. And that's just, look, like Hathor could do it. They could be the first ever Ethereum killer to really come up. Um, but I just wanted to see a little bit more effort from them on tapping into Ethereum because that's where the network effect is. That's where the users and the investors are. And by tapping into Ethereum's network effect, you get the beautiful, beautiful support of what happens in Ethereum. By going outside of Ethereum, you're essentially, you, you can do it. It's just much, much harder. It's so much harder. And so I spoke with the team back in um, October. And I think that my my sort of feeling was I just didn't, hear as much of a desire from them to interoperate with Ethereum. They have their own sort of clients and, and B2B people that are going to be using them. And that's cool, but it just didn't like, it didn't give me the feeling like they were going to do a Polkadot, which the reason why Polkadot works is because of interoperability with Ethereum. And that's what the big selling point, that's what's the big selling point for me at least. The Hex life is the best life, 360X since Jan 2020. So look, 
I made a video calling out Hex back in 2019, I think. And I took it down eventually because look, right now Hex is, I thought Hex was, was poorly advertised. But then in the end, it's got a community. People, the community's there and it's, people love it. The thing is for me is Hex dropped something like almost 99% or something like that before it pumped like 300X. So like, yeah, it's, it's up. Uh, if you bought it at the absolute low. Um, but for the people, the I think there was like $4 million or something that came in the first couple of days. And then it went and like plummeted and then it came back up. And everyone's in profits now. Congratulations to Hex. But I really didn't like uh, the marketing at first. And I also didn't like, uh, yeah, it did do a 360X. But I also thought that it's kind of an unfair comparison because it was down like 100X. Um, but regardless, congrats to Hex, guys. Good for you guys. Hope you guys stay rich and keep getting rich. Um, nothing really against Hex at this point. I've taken down all my negative comments about Hex. It's just a community now. It's a community now. They love their token. They love their project and good for them. Um, it's nothing that I've really, uh, I didn't like it because it's just not projects. It's not products. Sorry. It's just not tech that I like. I don't think that a token, a tokenomics scheme alone is enough. I think that there's got to be a product there personally. Um, it's pumping a lot. I hope it continues to pump. I hope everyone retires off their hex, but it's just never been exciting for me personally. Um, I hope, I hope everyone keeps doing well though. Um, but I have nothing against Hex. It's a, it's a big community now, and I hope uh, I hope it keeps growing. I hope everyone's happy. Hi, Elio. What do you think about Luxo? Talked about Luxo before. Thank you for everything you do. Realist out here never change. I won't change. You're welcome, Cody. Um, can you look into NDX Molly Wintermoot supports? NDX. Index Finance? New Dex? Maybe index finance, if I'm going to guess. Yeah, this is probably it because it's brand new. Okay, indexed pools. Kind of interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. I'll have to look at this. This could be interesting. I have to dig more into it. Got it. Yeah, so I mean, kind of like a YFI situation. I I feel like maybe with some tweaks, it's a it's a yield, it's a passive yield generation thing where you deposit money and then it earns yield on it for you. Uh, again, this was kind of all the rage uh, over the last few months. This is what took off in August. If this was out in August, this thing would have pamped. Um, but again, I need to look more into this. There's a lot of competition for this, but if Molly likes it, it's probably got something interesting about it. Probably got something. Definitely worth uh, definitely worth more research. Rich Hugh, thank you for that. You're a real one. All right. If you read Uritis white paper and don't like it, I will quit blockchain. You gave us gems. Take one for once, homie. Uh, Un Uniris. I'm not going to read the white paper on here. What is this? Did I already click on this one? All these logos be looking the same. I hate that. I hate when you come and there's just these stock images. It's just like, stop doing that, people. Be the only key to the next evolution of the internet. Okay. Oh, so this is like an identity management? This just has to do with like using your iris scanning? Talk to me about the tech. No, I don't want to see the cryptocurrency. Yeah, read my read me about the tech.
All right, I need some time. Yeah, so I see they're doing stuff with identities here. But this is the most convoluted. I've never seen a site so convoluted with the information they're trying to deliver. Doesn't bode well. I'll look into I'll look into it more. There's Station F. Is, so this is a French project, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's a French project. Um, yeah, I'll look more into it. Um, they really need to do a good job on just communicating what the heck this thing does. Uh, I'm guessing because they have the word iris in their name that it has to do uh, with facial recognition and identity management so that there's no password management. That's me really reading between the lines. I hate this art and I really need to get in here because all of this stuff is just buzzwords. There's no meat. Um, and so if, if just give me a second, man, I'd have to read into it. It's not meant for, I can't do this on live. Um, but I don't like this. I wish they would structure their information differently. Could I look into e-money? That's what I thought I've been looking into this whole time. Nothing comes up. Sorry about that, Bobby. What do you think of the project? Kudos. Yeah, I've been, people have been spamming kudos to me. Three million volume, no market cap. The infrastructure token for Web3. Oh, I think I saw this before. This is cool. I like this little, how they have the particles hovering. Oh, what does that mean? The infrastructure project for Web3. Such a big and bold claim. And then you have this. Oh, we're going to solve the world's problems. And then we have like this is what our website looks like. Blockchain, DeFi developer, kudos, L2 Oracle, kudos, off-chain network. As you can see, guys, when I read through projects, I tend to be pretty cynical. I tend to be pretty negative. And that's why I think it's good to start cynical. That'll be another little just pro tip to you guys. When you see a project, start cynical. Start by thinking this is probably not going to work and then let it win you over, over time. There's no reason to start optimistic. There's too many bad coins in crypto. Start cynical, then work your way to optimism. Layer 2 Oracle, DeFi, scientific research, data analytics, artificial intelligence, video rendering. So, so they're talking about cloud compute. Yeah, so it's a cloud compute network. All right, I mean, Look, the decentralized cloud is going to be big. It's just growing. This looks like a this looks like a website that someone could throw together for about in about five minutes. So it doesn't really it doesn't really bode well. That just the design. I guess this part is kind of cool, but I need to look more into this. I'm really into Akash and some other projects that have been in the works for years and years and have such amazing teams. And so this just doesn't this just doesn't look like it's going to stack up. I'll look into this. It's okay. I like cloud computing. I think decentralized uh, web is going to be a big, big thing over the next few years, but I just need this. I need more information on this. And to be honest, I need to meet with the team. I need to know everything about this team. I need to know about their histories, what their technology does. I need to know about their go-to-market strategy. I need to know about their marketing backgrounds because they're essentially trying to climb a mountain. And Akash is the only real cloud computing project that I think has the, it's one of the only ones I really like. I exec RLC is good too, but I, I prefer Akash. This one, I need to look more, but I've been getting spammed for it. I wonder if it's going to be uh, as good as it claims to be. Um, but I need to like literally meet with the team and, and know everything about them before I could recommend this one. Do you think Anchor is a sleeping giant? Uh, I like Anchor. I need to check in on them. Uh, I definitely liked them a lot uh, over the summer. I bought a lot of them uh, back in like uh, June, July. You're a true gem. Thank you for all your free advice. Thoughts on Voyager. I have an extra 1K to throw in a coin. All right, let's do Voyager. And then I'm honestly going to have to end the stream because I, 
I'm wrecked. I'm wrecked. No sleep. This is the one, Voyager token. Yeah, it's gotta be this one, it's brand new. Um, Tracy McGrady's, they got like mainstream press, celebrity, albeit a really old and completely an irrelevant celebrity. Build your wealth. Buy trade 50 plus. Yeah, so this like reminds me of like Yop and Yield App and all these yield farming ones. It's going to be interesting to see how this works because there's so many of these coming to market right now. So many of these. I just don't know. It's going to be hard to see which ones are going to work. And that's why I like the guy from Yop. I like the team from Yop. I just, it's hard to recommend any of these when there's like a sea of them. Um, and it's hard to know who's going to win that war. I need to know, like literally know their teams and use their products, actually play with the products. And uh, it's hard to do that right now. Um, not Most of these things don't even accept US right now. So um, I'll have to like get back to you on Voyager. I don't know. Can it pump? Sure. But is the product actually better in some way than the other products out there? Hard to say right now. Hard to say. Anchors on Coinbase custody just announced. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Let's see if it's pumping. Oh, it is. Look at that, the Coinbase pump. Yeah, good for everyone who's been an anchor. Obviously, I've been talking about this a lot. Um, it's been pretty sleeping, pretty sleepy sleeper uh, for the last uh, 90 days or so. Look at that, look at that candle. Um, yeah, it still is pretty far off its all-time high. Maybe it'll get back up there. I don't know. Where is that right now? 12, oh, oh, 012. Yeah, we'll see. Another 50% pump, it'll be there. All right, guys, 4,000 of you in the house. If you guys are enjoying this, if you enjoy uh, these these live sessions where I just come on, I spit it real with you guys, there's no filtration. There's just straight, uh, complete and total research being done right in front of your eyes. Of course, the beginning was a little more planned out with a little bit more of a structured message. You are being manipulated when you see these big news articles, when you see these big, you know, sort of fake outs, when there's these big FUD storms. I believe they're manipulation. And the point is that they want you to be less confident in what Bitcoin is because they're about to print so much money and devalue the dollar so very much that it's going to make the case for Bitcoin pretty much undeniable. Then you look at things like what's going on with the SEC and potential a much friendlier regulator coming in there that's going to potentially give clarity and a, and a path forward for innovation here in the United States and beyond. It's a beautiful time to be in crypto, and I sincerely hope you guys are doing well and learning well. Uh, we had amazing uh, news out of Ren and Rook, two of my favorite projects in the space. Not only are they two of my favorites, but they're now officially going to collaborate, or I guess as officially as you can get that he made some reference, some cryptic reference that he's actually going to be uh, using Ren VM for Rook, which is awesome. With that said, I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are. If you enjoyed this episode, destroy that like button. Give me the likes, please. It's all I ask for in exchange for this content. As always, if you guys are not subscribed, I highly encourage you to subscribe because the altcoin content and the time-sensitive content that's going to help you find the next Rook, the next Alliance Block, the next Parsec, the next coin that's going to do some insane gains, all you have to do to be made aware of those is subscribe and put that bell notification on and you will be one of the first people in the world to know what coins I'm looking at, what coins I have in my bag, what coins I think are going to be the next biggest gainers in the entire space. And I've got a pretty awesome track record of calling them. And I think that you guys will uh, really enjoy that subscription button. So it's a free and easy way to get ahead of the market. Absolutely no VIPs, no special groups. You are the first to know this with the bell button on. With that said, I sincerely hope you guys are having a happy and healthy day. Wherever you are, feel free to follow me on Twitter or Telegram. I do post some different types of content over there. As usual, my name is Elio Trades. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon.